We can discuss the songs if you really want to. Well, I have all your charts, so are there any changes you might like to make? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times actors had to learn to sing for a role. There's work to be done. But you've never sounded better. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable actors who figured out how to flex their vocals in a new way for a project, whether they already had some singing chops or not. Which of these performances blew you away? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Meryl Streep. Florence Foster Jenkins. Now, we all know that Meryl Streep had the chops to pull off ABBA, as she so clearly showed us in Mamma Mia. But opera is a whole other ball game, and bad opera? Well, that's just plain difficult. But that's exactly what Streep had to learn to do to portray Florence Foster Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins was a New York socialite who loved singing, but wasn't all that good at it. In order to get the right delivery, Streep worked with a voice coach and learned how to sing opera like a well-meaning but poorly pitched heiress might. Raise the soft palate. Good. Needless to say, she did a masterful job. One word, authenticity. Maestro, do you think I'm ready for a concert? You'll never be more ready. Number nine, Jeff Bridges, Crazy Heart. I used to be somebody. Turns out it's hard to get that country twang just right. Jeff Bridges won an Academy Award for his portrayal of Otis Bad Blake, a washed up country singer in Crazy Heart. Funny how falling feels like flying. Apparently no stranger to music, but he did work with veteran vocal coach Roger Love to make sure his performance would be just right. According to Love, who apparently likes to host his classes over the phone, Bridges already had a good foundation for singing, but vocal exercises helped shore up his power and range, and the result was an award-winning performance for the books. There's a brand new angel with no Number 8, Tom Hiddleston, I Saw the Light. It's hard to bring an icon like Hank Williams to life, but we think Tom Hiddleston did a pretty good job in 2015's I Saw the Light. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? This might seem like an odd casting choice, given that Hiddleston is a Brit and Williams was decidedly not. But the actor spent months preparing with another country legend, Rodney Crowell, as his singing coach to nail Hank's signature southern vocals. Lord, I don't know what I'll do. All I do is set Speaking to Vanity Fair, Hiddleston recalled how scary it was to have to learn how to yodel. And while the film itself wasn't a huge success, the work that Hiddleston put into honing his vocals and playing the part is commendable. Come see me, baby, and bring along some dough, and we'll go honky tonkin', honky tonkin'. Number seven, Tom Cruise, Rock of Ages. one thing we know about Tom Cruise is that he doesn't do anything halfway. So it came as no surprise that the guy who jumps out of planes in his movies went all out when it was time to be a rock star. For 
His role in Rock of Ages, Cruz reportedly trained for five hours a day for months to nail his character Stacy Jax's sound. Well, listening to him jam out on songs like Pour Some Sugar On Me and Wanted Dead or Alive, we think he pretty much nailed it. Do you take sugar? Number six, Reese Witherspoon, Walk the Line. I had to tell you. I had to tell you. I just can't sing tonight. Remember vocal coach Roger Love? Well, Jeff Bridges isn't the only superstar he's helped when it comes to perfecting the country sound. In 2005's Walk the Line, both Reese Witherspoon and Joaquin Phoenix took vocal lessons to try and sound like June Carter and Johnny Cash. I'm not the one you Phoenix sounds great, but we're mesmerised at how closely Witherspoon emulates Carter. Love was called in late in the game, and was given approximately three weeks to prepare the stars for the studio. Still, they pulled it off. Witherspoon sung her way into an Academy Award, so clearly it's all worked out for the best. Play the jukebox, play. Number 5, Renee Zellweger, Judy. We've known that Renee Zellweger had mad singing chops ever since she blew us all away in Chicago. But it's one thing to be a good singer, it's a whole other thing to emulate one of the best vocalists ever. I'll try to apply myself and teach my heart how to sing. In 2019, Zellweger took to the big screen as Judy Garland and was rewarded with an Oscar. She worked with veteran vocal coach Gary Katona to strengthen her voice and capture Garland's signature warbling style. Shout hallelujah, come on get happy, get ready for the judgement day. But the actress didn't want to simply copy the legendary singer. As Katona explained in an interview with Variety, she aimed to bring something of her own alchemy to it. Well, we think she nailed it. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops, that's where you find me. Number four, Helena Bonham Carter, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Wait, where's your rush? Where's your hurry? You gave me such a fright, I thought he was the ghost of a minute. Can't you sit? Sit it down, sit! You would think that Helena Bonham Carter wouldn't have had a hard time convincing her then partner, Tim Burton, to cast her in a movie. After all, her talent is undeniable. Well, according to Carter, she had to prove herself and undergo the standard audition procedure in order to be cast as Mrs. Lovett in 2007's Sweeney Todd movie. Business needs a lift, debts to be in price, think of it as thrift as a gift, if you get my drift. But she also took singing lessons to learn the technique and prove that she had the chops to pull off the notoriously difficult music of Stephen Sondheim. Listening to her in the movie, you can tell the training paid off, with her amazing work speaking for itself. Once my secret, Number three, Emily Blunt, Into the Woods. Emily Blunt's vocals in Into the Woods are strikingly strong and clear. There's something about the woods, not just surviving, you're blossoming in the woods. It definitely doesn't sound like she had such a hard time preparing for the role, or that she ever considered not auditioning at all. But alas, things are not as simple as they appear. There are vows, there are ties, there are needs, there are standards, there are shouldn'ts and shoulds. According to Blunt, most of her singing prior to auditioning for the movie primarily took place in the shower. Thus, she underwent gruelling months of singing lessons to be able to nail the part as well as she did. It may have been a steep learning curve, as the actress puts it, but you can't deny the talent you see and hear on screen. Now I understand, and it's time to leave the wards. Number two, Bradley Cooper, A Star Is Born. 
This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call committing to the bit. When working on 2018's A Star Is Born, Bradley Cooper puts himself through the ringer to make sure his singing was up to snuff. It's time to testify. There's no room for lies and everyone's waiting for you. Cooper took months of singing lessons to nail down the deep, smoky southern sound of Jackson Maine. And get this, his vocal coach was none other than Roger Love. He also took piano and guitar lessons in order to keep everything authentic. Takes a lot to change a man, hell, it takes a lot to try. Maybe it's time to let the old ways die. That might sound like a lot of work, but you have to remember, he was going to be singing with Lady Gaga. We would take ourselves pretty seriously in his shoes too. unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Sissy Spacek, coal miner's daughter. She studied hard to get the Loretta Lynn twang down. We were so happy, my heart was in a world, but now I'm a honky talker. Audrey Hepburn, My Fair Lady. Sometimes you put the work in and Marnie Nixon still dubs you. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plains. Bye, George, you got it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Andrew Garfield. Tick, tick, boom. Before 2021, we all saw Garfield as a super talented actor, but no one thought of him as a singer. Still, Tick Tick Boom director Lin-Manuel Miranda could see him playing Rent creator Jonathan Larson in a musical after watching him in Angels in America. Time to refocus before they wrap it up. he didn't know if he could sing. Now, the two share a mutual contact, Greg Miele, who lied and assured Miranda that Garfield was a wonderful singer, setting things in motion. I made a vow I wonder now Am I cut out to spend my time this way? The actor ultimately got the part and engaged in vocal lessons for a full year. All that hard work more than paid off, as he earned luminous praise for his stellar performance. We don't wake up and shake off the nation. We'll eat the dust of the world. Wondering why. agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.